Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that if we do not... Goodness gracious, what's next? We understand that if we do not what? Yeah, yeah but that, I missed something then, right? Say it again. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is given freely as a gift to all that obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing. I need a teleprompter. <laughs> Anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of uh, prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. That's why we need to stop. Friday nights, you know what I'm saying? I just get a little too sleepy nowadays. Friday. That's all it is, you know what I'm saying? We can Rain start at seven. Huh? We can start at seven. You ain't even up on seven. <laughs> Excuse you. You are not. All right. Daddy. Well, don't be looking around. Look at you. I'm trying to look around. What you mean? You on the spot. Where we starting, Adrian? Help me out. Uh -huh. All right, six. We got one. Six. Six what? Give me something else. Obadiah. Obadiah. Good gracious. Your mom threw you that one? Ooh, okay. Obadiah. It's only one chapter in it. Give me verse six. Let's see what it's talking about. Yeah. It figured out. That thing ain't called talking about Edomite. I don't know. I don't know. Y'all try to throw a curve, but I don't know how I'm supposed to tie this in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't expect no Obadiah. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Let the most high God work. You know what I'm saying? That thing, I don't know. You do that. I'm going to find out. That thing, one chapter. You know what I'm saying? Turn slow. I got it. I right before Jonah. It's going to be Obadiah. We won't. It's only one chapter, so Obadiah verse 6. It's Obadiah verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? Watch what the book says. It's a, it's a how are the things of who? Of Esau were searched out. It's a how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hid things sought up? How are his hidden things sought up? Excuse me. All the men of your confederacy have brought thee even to the border. He said, what? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. He said, all the men of thy confederacy, right? So all the people you had you had a, a deal with, they brought you even to the border. What else? The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee mm -hmm. and prevailed against thee, that they eat thy bread, that they, they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Uh-huh. Shall I not in that day say, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise man out of Edom, and understanding out of the Mount of Esau. Mm -hmm. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Mm -hmm. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. Thy violence against who? Thy brother Jacob. Oh, shame that. shall cover thee. Right? And thou shalt be cut off forever. Right? A lot of our Hebrew brothers, they try to teach us, they try to teach us to hate Esau. All right, they say Esau is the white man, All right? And guess what? Guess what the book just told us? Thy brother. You know what? You know what that's gonna bring us to? Our law that says thou shalt not hate your brother. All right? The Messiah, his commandment saying, don't hate your brother. You hate your brother, you like a murderer. All right? The book always gonna line us up. It's always gonna give us the information to know the truth. We just have to pay attention to it. Right? One thing that it said before, go uh, go back up, uh, maybe give me verse 7. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The right? Men, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee. Who knows what this is talking about? Uh, 
when they went up against uh, didn't they help uh, they help didn't they help somebody uh, Babylon get at uh, get at us yeah Babylon yeah all right Babylon what Babylon did is they took over all the nations surrounded and then they they got the other nations to join with them and they came and got got us. Right? So when they got us out and, and exported us to Babylon, you know what I'm saying? That's what they did. They had help from the Edomites and other groups. You know what I'm saying? Same thing the Romans did. When the Romans came and came and got us, though the Romans get credit for taking us out, it wasn't actually Romans that was on the front lines fighting. That was Edomites and all types of other people, you know what I'm saying? Fighting fighting alongside, taking our people out. Right? Rome, when we Rome had goons. Rome had goons. You know what I'm saying? When it came down to us being put into slavery, you had the Moors against us, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, you know what I'm saying, the English. You know what I'm saying? All these different groups of people all came together and participated in the slave trade. Right? So at the end of the world, why do you think all nations are coming and they're going to see what God's talking about? Because they all got to get punished. Why do you think he scattered us into all nations? Like all that stuff line up and it tie in because all these people have been confederate against our people. Right? At the end of the day, that's what it come down to. He bring us into the land. Right? And because we disobeyed the man and we got brought into the land and we didn't do what the man told us to do, we agreed to keep his law. Multiple times we said all that you say, you know what I'm saying, will we do. Right? So he got us there. We didn't do what he said. So guess what he said? All right? Eventually he said, get your butt out. But it all started off real slow. He gave us plenty of chances. All right? Book of Judges. All right? Book of Judges, chapter 4. Last week we talked about how we had judges that rise up and our people start acting wild again after the judge go. All right? Then we had one judge called Ehud. Ehud had a dagger, two edge. You know what I'm saying? He stuck that thing inside of one of the rulers that was against us. You know what I'm saying? That thing said the refuge, the dirt came out. You know what I'm saying? The dirt came out of the fat man's stomach. Hey, his, his servants thought he was pooping. You know what I'm saying? He snuck out the back door. Ain't nobody know. His servants thought he was up in there pooping because the dirt came out. The poop came out. Right? After that, they found out he was gone. After that, he hood, he kind of ran the town for a little bit. But then eventually, verse 1. Judges chapter 4, verse 1. This Judges chapter 4, give me verse 1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Hasroth of the Gim Gentiles. Uh-huh. Hasroth in what? Of the Gentiles. Right? So a lot of times, we just talking about this the other day, that we got a brother that believed only white people are Gentiles. Right? You see right here, you know what I'm saying? This is it. We ain't talking about that when. That was yesterday? We talked about that yesterday. Next day, we reading and what you see. You know, the Gentiles. There wasn't no white people in Canaan. Canaan, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't no white. That's Hamites. What you talking about? Wasn't no white folks over there. What y'all talking about? Right? But we look at it. If we don't take our time with this Bible, we start making assumptions. And the problem is we make assumptions based off of what we see today, right? Because what we see today is white people are the enemy. Gentiles are typically the enemy in the Bible. We start making the assumption to say white people are the Gentiles. They're the only Gentiles. Now, white people are Gentiles, but there's some black Gentiles. There's some brown Gentiles. All these people are Gentiles and they ain't our people, right? You ain't from Israel. You ain't a descendant of Israel. You a Gentile. Truth be told, you a Gentile. You don't believe the book. Right? However you line this thing up, at the end of the day, we have to we have to put ourselves in a position to get ourselves out of the hype. Right? It's always gonna be a lot of hype. It's always gonna be somebody who got this 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 hot take, you know what I'm saying, got this wild thing to say, it's gonna seem plausible, and if you say it, you're gonna seem like you the wisest person in the world. We gotta stay away. Who cares about sounding wise? I know we sound stupid. A lot of times stuff we say, we sound stupid. I've been telling people a word, they'd be like, Well, you say women shouldn't preach. You know what I'm saying? That thing sounds stupid to them. And they want me to defend it. I don't know what you're talking about. The book says you can't preach. What you talking about? You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to say? You know what I'm saying? What do you want me to give you some extra logical reason or why? No, I'm not interested in doing it. I could probably come up with something, but I'm not interested. Who cares? The book say don't do it. 
that you make a decision, do it anyway or don't do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do what you want. I'm not convincing you, right? I'm never going to come to your church if you open up one. So that thing don't bother me one bit. I'm just telling you what it's after. I help you out. Right? 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 We have to get down to it. Right? They make it seem like it's just a, you know, you against me. I mean, you against women. It's a men thing. We're going to talk about it today. Now we're going to talk about Deborah. Right? You are, you know what I'm saying? You are, you are getting, no, that thing, I say the same thing to her. You know what I'm saying? I tell you all the time. A pastor, if a pastor got, got, let's see, a pastor got a wife. He divorced her and then get another wife. Should he, should he be leading the congregation? Nope. He can, he can teach. He can teach the book. It ain't nothing against him teaching the book. But can he be a pastor? You don't see me preaching the word? Go ask your mama for the water. Yeah, you can have some water, but go ask your mama for it. All right? He 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 can't be he can't lead a congregation now. He can't be a pastor. You know what I'm saying? Like, do it if you want to. I'm gonna tell you what the book says. You wanna go be a pastor? I sat up under a pastor a little bit. In the in the dark, that thing driving crazy. In the dark, church had a wife, divorced a wife, and they got another wife. Whole time pastor. I ain't know nobody at the time, but I'm just I look back on it like these people are wild. That's wow. Same thing, deacon, same thing. Right? That thing is wow. That thing set a standard. That thing a tight standard. Husband of one wife. That got that. I don't know how else you gonna slice that thing. Book say you you get you another one. That's that's uh that's a uh, what's it called? Adultery. Yeah. Alright? I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to put it. Let's uh let's keep going. What else we got? And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. In 20 years, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. So this is a bad man, in other words. Keep going. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth, she judged Israel at that time. Mm -hmm. And she dwelt under the palm tree of, of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Mount Ephraim. Right, so now you got Deborah, right? Deborah was a judge. So we learned about a few other judges in the in the third chapter. Now this is a this is a woman, right? That's why I brought up the women preaching stuff. So you have a woman now, she's a judge. Now a lot of time when you talk to a woman who, who's been deceived or she just the, the struggle is not understand the struggle. There are a lot of women that are smarter than a lot of these guys, right? I mean we we run into all the time. It's like they're like you're pretty smart, and it's smarter than a lot of these guys, right? And I know not to the guys or anything. It's just we are human beings. People have different levels of intelligence, and people can articulate things better than that. So there's very articulate women out here, even if they ain't smart, right? They're more articulate. They know how to form their words. They know how to speak more clearly. They know how to how to be concise and get a point across and all that. So if a woman knows she has this talent, I'm more articulate than this guy. He can preach. And teach the word, but I can't. That's a struggle, right? Because from her point of view, she's looking like I only want to do the right thing, right? Like I only want to have more people know about God. But you're telling me I can't do that. She sees it's me telling her, right? you know what I'm saying? She don't see it as the book telling her right now because that's not how, how she's accepted. She's looking like it can't be wrong for me to do the right thing, right? That's how she equated right thing, teaching the word. So it can't be wrong for me to do the right thing. So then her mind tells her that by preaching the word, she's furthering the gospel. But the gospel itself is telling her a woman shouldn't preach the word. So we have to deal with that. Right? That's a tough thing to deal with. To say, I have the talents to do this. What's holding me back? Why? Right? Why can't I preach the word? Somebody break that down for me. It's okay to want to know why. But at the same time, why are you learning why? You got to be able to look at the book and say, uh, it say don't do it, period. You can't say, I'm going to do it until I know why. That's the type of stuff the most I got him. He had darkened your whole eye. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yeah, I ain't going to let you see nothing. You're just going to be doing it for the rest of your life. I ain't going to teach you nothing. Right? But when you can obey, you say, you know what? I see what it say. Right? There's some stuff. There's some stuff. You know what I'm saying? You may even get wrong in the Bible. Like, oh, it say I can't do this or I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And just because you think it's a sin, you stop doing it. And he finally laid out later, find out, like, oh, okay, well, okay, that ain't actually gonna send me to hell. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You still might not decide to back do it, but the simple fact that you step back and say, I'm trying not to do it at all, until you understand, that's what the most high God is looking for. Because that's how you come into him like a child. 
I thought you, I thought you didn't want me to do it, so I ain't doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what we have to look at. So now, when we speak to our women and we try to teach them and, and try to look, we don't have to try to we don't have to try to do like a lot of these other people do and try to make them feel better about other things. That's not that's not our job. All of us, our job, look at the book, do what it say. Right? We can explain it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's in the book. It's certain theories, certain different ways you can you can hand it out. But at the end of the day, the job is not to make us feel better about, you know what I'm saying, about, about silly stuff like this. About the world trying to confuse us and make us feel like the Bible is sexist. The Bible ain't sexist. Stop saying crazy stuff. What's wrong with you? These people sexist. Right? These people say, if somebody said, they say, if somebody said it's crazy how the world will make you feel like Working a 90, 9 to 5 for somebody who don't care about you is better than staying at home taking care of your kids for your husband. Right. right? It's like they had you thinking, they had you thinking that that's just like, that's are you you trying to hold me down. Like it's more important. I'd rather be away from my kids. I'd rather not serve my husband. It's more important for me to work for these white folk or these whoever folk that don't care nothing about me. Make a little money. So we have to step back and look at what's our logic, right? But what's the problem? At the end of the day, what's the problem? You have men that are taking advantage, right? That is the problem. You have men that have taken advantage, right? Men that have used the Bible to say, oh, I'm in control. And then they misuse that control. What does that build in women? Mistrust. So now when the man tell you, you can't preach, here goes the man again, misusing his power. Now, actually, that's the book, right? But because we haven't been taught, it's hard for the woman to separate those things. It's hard for the men to separate, right? So that's what we try to do. We just try to get to the bottom of it, try to figure it out. So you got Deborah. Does she teach the Bible? What the Bible just call it? A judge. A judge. Right? A judge. What's the difference between teaching the book and judging? not leading the congregation. She's not leading a group of men to do a specific thing concerned by God. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's not, like she's not teaching anybody what the law says or anything like that. We got priests for that. Okay. But she's a judge who judges matters like, okay, you did this, you did that. The correct thing to do here is to restore this. And that's it. She provides a decision for a matter. Yeah. Right? Just like T said. You did this, you did this. Okay, this is how we're going to resolve this situation. That's perfectly lawful for a woman. Right? A lot of people forget. A lot of men forget that. Right? A lot of us Hebrews, we get into this truth and we figure out, you know what? We're not about to let this society emasculate. What is it? Demasculate? Emasculate? Demasculate. It ain't demasculate. It ain't demasculate. It's emasculate. It ain't emasculate. Why well, I want to say emasculate? Masculine. You know, so you gotta find a Jay Z lyric. It might be a masculine. Masculine. Yeah, I'm gonna go with demasculine. It's, it's one of the masculine. It's not demasculine. Something getting masculated. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know what I'm saying? They it's trying to do that to us. You know what I'm saying? They trying to take away our masculinity. That's how you do it. You gotta simplify. You know what I'm saying? They trying to take away our masculinity. We so, so we, we stand here and you say, you know what? We ain't having this no more. I'm a man. I'm just not a man. I'm a Hebrew man, right? So you know what that turned into? No, I ain't no. You know what I'm saying? My wife ain't about to talk to me in kind of way. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Y'all be letting your wife lead your household. So you know how we got to lead our household. You know what leading our household turned into? I can't say. I can't do nothing that my wife say. Because if, if I do what my wife say, guess who's leading? My wife. That's how we start to train ourselves to think. That ain't book, though. Right? That ain't book. That ain't book. The books say, you know what I'm saying? Okay, let's think about this. When, uh, when, uh, let's think about King Ahasuerus. What was his name? King Ahasuerus, right? He invited Esther in. He was the king, no doubt, right? Mm -hmm. But he asked Esther a question. How would you like it? You know what I'm saying? What would you like to happen here? Esther gave her judgment. Esther said, you know what? How about you make it so that the Jews can kill everybody that tried to kill them? And the king said, let it be so. 
Who led that situation? Esther. No, the king. The king. Yeah, he led but the Esther king. gave the judgment. Yeah, yeah. Esther gave made the correct call. King was the leader. He never lost control. At any time, he could say, this goes or this doesn't. At any time, he could have used his judgment and say, nah, I don't nah. think that makes sense. But he listened to his wife. Abraham, okay, uh, grab Genesis. Just Genesis chapter 21. It's Genesis chapter 21. Give me verse 1. It's important. A lot of times people will use Deborah and a few other women in the Bible and they say, see, it's okay for women to teach and preach and lead congregations. Ah, we have to understand the difference, but who's teaching us the difference? You can get confused. You see Deborah, woman of God, speaking prophecy. You'd be like, well, technically she's teaching God's word, so women can teach. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, she didn't get up in front of the whole congregation and read the law in front of everybody next to She didn't teach. She didn't teach no word. Mm -hmm. She gave prophecy. She spoke new words onto people. But she didn't say, hey, these are words that's already written, and let me tell you what they mean. You can't do that. A woman can quote Bible, right? Ain't no, you know, ain't nothing against a woman quoting Bible. You could, now, you get to, you get to talking about what it means to a man. You can quote Bible and tell a woman what it means. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? But you get to talking to a man say, listen, you know what I'm saying? I don't even play, I don't even play that stuff on Facebook. I'll be looking on Facebook. Women start jumping in the audience. I'll be like, I'm out of here, but I'll see y'all later. You know what I'm saying? That thing don't make no sense to me. It's crazy. I'm not, I'm about to sit here. Why well, I'm going to sit here and argue with you. You know what I'm saying? My mom trying to argue with me. She gets to, you know what I'm saying? Going back and forth and trying to pull out Bible. Like, listen, this thing ain't even appropriate. It ain't, you start, we can talk about your emotions, we can talk about how you feel about yeah. something, all that. Once you get to talking about, okay, but this is what that means. Yeah, that thing ain't even appropriate. And it's nothing against, I love my mama. Nothing against my mama. Nothing against the women on Facebook. The book very clearly says a woman should not teach or usurp authority over man. It's not teach and usurp authority. It's teach or. If it said teach and, I'd be like, okay, you can teach, but while you teaching, don't be telling no man what to do. I wouldn't have no problem with that. I wouldn't have a problem. Me personally, I don't have a problem with a woman teaching and usurping authority over men. Me personally, I don't have a problem with it. God got a problem with it. Therefore, it's a problem for me. You all right? I got to do what the man say. Let me see. This is, uh, this is Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Talking about getting her pregnant. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Right. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. According to the law. Keep going. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. Mm -hmm. And she said, who would, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Mm -hmm. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham mocking. Uh oh So remember... Abraham had a baby by another woman first, right? Sarah thought she couldn't have no, 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 no babies. So then she said, you know what? We had this woman servant. Go into our woman servant, and the baby that you have by this servant will be like my baby. You know what I'm saying? She, I own this servant, right? She, the, her logic was, I own her. And this is our culture. It's not just her logic. Our culture was, if I own this servant, and my husband has sex with her and has a baby for her, for that reason, just to have a baby, then that's my baby. Right? This servant is an extension to me at that point, so that's my baby. The servant is just a servant. You just serve the need for me. Thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. So then she had that baby. So the baby, that baby, has grown up, and, you know what I'm saying, now he's around. But now Sarah I have her own baby. And then she see Hagar, you know what I'm saying, she out there, you know what I mean, making a little, you know what I'm saying, kind of, you know what I'm saying, being a little cute. You know what I'm saying? You know, women, they be trying to be a little cute when they're in competition. So she's looking like, oh, no, that's not happening. Right? So what she, let's look at what she told her. 
Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. Get her butt out of here. For the son of the You over there snickering for I just had a son. You think it's funny? Get your butt out of here. Right? Let's see. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Get her out of here and her son. Now remember, this is not just her son. This is her husband's son. His first son. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to you have to understand, like, this is like this is my boy. I haven't had a son all this time. I finally have a son. This is my boy. You know what I'm saying? Then I have a second son, right? But nobody take the place of that first son. Trust me. I like my black boy a little bit. You know what I'm saying? My black boy, he good. But my light skinned boy, you know what I mean? That thing, that first son is something special. So you look at that first son, then she come in, she like, oh, you snickering? Oh, something funny to you. Get your butt out and your darn son. Right? Watch what the book say about Abraham. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Because that thing son. grieved him. He was sitting like, that's my boy. What you mean they got to go? Now I got to deal with this drama in the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure it out. I got I to try to keep everybody together. Abraham immediately, you can imagine, Abraham immediately going into fix mode. How can I keep everything exactly how I want it without things changing, without having to sacrifice something? But watch what happened next. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah had said unto thee. Uh-huh. Hearken unto her voice, for Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh-huh. He said what? All that she say what? And because of thy bondwoman, in all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That's from God. He said, before you get to running your mouth, you know what I'm saying? Don't let that, he said, first of all, all right. He said it was grievous to him, right? Most high God came back and said, what, don't what? Don't let it be grievous to your sight. Get over it. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I mean, let's just, right. let's just talk turkey. The man told he looked at, get over it. Right. Like, all right, you know, I feel you. Get over it, though. And everything that your wife said, listen to it. She right. Get her butt out of there. Both of them and, and the boy. Get them both out. You good. And uh, get over it. I know it hurt you. Yeah, get over it. You good. Right? Because his wife in that situation had the correct judgment. That's not leadership. It don't take a leader to have correct judgment. You need that. In my position, right? I just got transferred to a different department, right? I don't know nothing about anything that these people are doing. So the first thing I'm going to do as a leader, I'm going to find the people that make the best decisions. And I'm going to say, you, come close to me, right? Who make the best decisions on this team? Who knows their stuff? Okay, I need you, I need you, I need you, and I need you, right? I want y'all sitting next to me, and I want y'all coming to me at these meetings. Because when I pose them the question, I'm relying on their judgment. Does that make sense? Are they leading my team? At any point, I'll be like, uh, no, we're not doing that, right? But that's how it works. That's not leadership. Real leadership, real leadership is going to recognize those things and respect those things. Real love with your wife, you're going to respect her judgment. You're going to be able to look at it and be like, okay, you know what? I see what's going on. But what you're not going to let her do is lead the relationship. What you're not going to let her do is you, you're not going to let her preach you and teach you no darn word. Right? But there's space for all of it. All of it has space. All of it has our, its appropriate meaning. Grab uh, Genesis. Because we want to know why. At the end of the day, the woman want to know why. Why ain't anybody about to sit here and be like, a woman that, that's able-bodied to preach? She know the word? She been in church all her darn life? Her pastor is a woman? She trying to figure out why I can't preach. She want to know why. She ain't listen. They probably clicked off of the video all the time. I ain't trying to listen to all you, all this, man. you know what they call it, mansplaining. I ain't trying to listen to all your mansplaining. Look okay, you know what I'm saying? Let's cut to the chain. You know what I'm saying? We gotta understand, they gotta understand why Genesis chapter 3. It's Genesis chapter 3. Give me a verse. Uh, he can give me verse 1. It's Genesis chapter 3. Give me verse 1. Now the 
the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Uh huh. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She knew. Okay. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, mm. for God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay. And when the woman saw that there the tree was good, good for, for what? Good for food. Good and good for what else? And that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm. and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She to make one what? Wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did. So hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to make sure we understand. When the woman saw that this this fruit was good for food, right? It was nice. I mean, it's a good looking fruit. And at the same time, it can make you wise. What happened? She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Okay. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Who led that? He blessed. Right? She wasn't making a decision. I mean, she wasn't She wasn't uh, making a decision on the matter. She looked at a fruit. She got the fruit against what she knew it was right. Right? If we went, we don't have to go back, but we went to chapter two. Guess who, guess who was told they couldn't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden? It wasn't Eve. Eve wasn't around yet. It was Adam. So Adam, we would imagine, told Eve what God said. Right? As God's man. Then Eve said, quoted that back to Satan or to the serpent, and then the serpent convinced her out otherwise. So then she took it upon herself as a leader at that point, and she grabbed the fruit. Right? Mm -hmm. Grabbing the fruit was wrong before God. You understand? So she took the fruit and she said, you know what? This could make me, what was it? Wise. Wise. Right? So then the punishment, we don't have to keep reading, but the punishment, if we read a couple verses later, the punishment, well, we got to read it. It wouldn't even be right if we didn't read it. Go ahead, keep going. And the eyes of them were both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Uh-huh. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Okay. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Uh-oh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and okay. I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Right? He asked him a question. He said, who told you that you were naked? Let's see. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee mm -hmm. that thou should not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Who was the first person the, the Most High God went to? The man. You don't think Most High God know who took the fruit? Right? But the Most High God operated with order. I know who I put in charge. Right? So guess who I'm going to go talk to? The man. And who did the man say? Oh, no, the woman took that. All right? So then let's see who we talk to next. And he said, wait, wait. Hi. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that you have done? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Okay. And she pushed it off to the serpent. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. So now, a lot of times people will say, see, y'all blame the woman for all the wrong in the world, right? Is that a logical statement? Not really. Why? Because Satan was the one that did it. At the end of the day, he asked the woman, and then it came down. She said, oh, Satan did it. And then he cursed the snake first. First person he addressed, Adam. First person he cursed was the snake. And he said, you know what? The snake got to crawl in his belly all his life. Nobody look at that snake. Nobody look at every snake and be like, see, y'all blamed all the wrong of the world on the snake. 
We've never said that, but that was the first one that got cursed for this. Let's see the second curse. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's talking about the Messiah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's talking about the Messiah, right? Satan, Satan the Messiah is going to have uh, enmity, right? He's going to bruise his head. That's when the thorns came down, right? It's with the thorns on his head, right? And he said, you're going to bruise his heel. Why? Because the man gonna put, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna put his neck on the on the on on um he gonna he gonna put make his enemies his footstool. Right? So that's that's talking about, you know what I'm saying? That's talking about the Messiah. Right? We look at it, keep going though. Watch what he says to the woman. The woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So now it's gonna it's gonna be very painful. Right? He said it's gonna be very painful when you have the child have the children. Alright, keep going. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall. And thy de desire shall be to what? Thy husband. And he shall what? And he shall rule over thee. So that got that. The way the Most High God set it up is for the man to rule over the woman. Right. Then lastly, he said we don't have to read it, but he said to the man that he got to labor. Right, the man, you got to work. It ain't gonna be difficult for you. You ain't gonna be able to easily get nothing up out of the ground. Right? It ain't gonna grow like it's been growing here. Stuff's gonna start drying up. You know what I'm saying? You gotta wait on seedings. Ain't no water coming out of the ground to water stuff for you like it's doing here in the uh, Garden of Eden. Yeah, no, we take, we getting rid of all that. Right? So that, that had been the curse on our people. I mean, on, on all people, rather. Right? But that tells us the why. The woman took leadership, and it was a curse. So we look at it. Did every woman, it, does every woman got to suffer because of what Eve did? Yes. Yeah. Does every snake got to suffer because of what the serpent did? Yeah. yeah. Does every human being got to suffer because of what Adam did? Yeah. That's just how it plays out. Because of that, an order has been set up for all of the time. Right? Just based off of the reaction to that one thing. Now, this sets into, does that mean that the woman is, cannot and just does not have the ability to preach? No. She might have, she might be able to preach better than everybody out here. Discipline would say, if you serve God, work within what he set up. I don't care how good you think you're going to do it. You can't do it better than the man. He told you not to do it. That's the why. Is it good enough for him? I don't know. That's a business. Give me 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter three, verse one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, uh -huh. that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Right. So he said, and when they say conversation, they ain't talking about talking. Right. If you look up that word conversation in old English. Um, it's talking about behavior, all right? So it's saying, it's saying basically, he said, likewise, the women should be in subjection to their husbands, all right? Then after that, you know what I'm saying? He's saying by the behavior of the wife, it'll win the husband over. The husband, just by looking at his wife's behavior, he'll look at that thing and be like, you know what? There's something real there, all right? Something really happening right there. Okay, I know what I need to do. And that put something in the husband. That put a burn in the husband and be like, you know what? Now I need to learn. Right? Why do you think that is? Why does it have to be that way? I mean, the book. The book, I don't know, it could probably make you what? Wise. Wise. Last time a woman reached out to try to make herself wise, that thing led to a whole lot of curses. Right? So now, she can learn it, but she can't get that free fruit to him. He has to look at her behavior and say, I'm going to reach for this tree of life myself. Right? Because this is how it's set up now. 
So now it says without word. Read it again. Likewise, wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Without word. All right? Without the word. All right? So that means she's not going back. This is what this means. This is what that means. No, don't tell nobody what nothing means. Don't tell, don't tell no man, at least, what anything means. You know what I'm saying? In the book. That don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? We can't do that. That's not, that's not that's against what the book is talking about. However, your behavior can communicate everything you need it to communicate. And in that is wisdom. Right? In that is wisdom. We look at it and look how wisdom, uh, look how wisdom is characterized. This is Luke chapter 11. Alright? Watch this. And then give me Proverbs 8 after that. This is Luke chapter 11. And then we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 8. Give me uh, Matthew chapter 11, not Luke. Matthew chapter 11 and Proverbs chapter 8. Matthew chapter 11, give me verse 16. Well, whereunto shall I liken this generation? Mm hmm. It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows mm -hmm. and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Mm -hmm. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. Uh huh. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a devil. Mm -hmm. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a gluttonous and a wine bibber, and a friend of publicans and sinners. Mm -hmm. But wisdom is justified of her children. Wisdom is justified of her what? Children. So you look. Wisdom is classified as what? A woman. There's a reason for that. And there's a reason why the Most High God put a woman as a judge. Right? Grab, uh, this is Proverbs 8. Because the woman saw and she said, that fruit, that thing is good for food. It's pleasurable to my eye. And what was that last thing she noticed? That thing can make me wise. It's Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Whose voice? Her voice. Why, why did the Most High God choose to characterize wisdom as a woman? Let's see, keep going. She stands in the top of the high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates in the entry of the city and at the coming in thy doors. Mm -hmm. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Mm -hmm. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of understanding heart. Here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall bring right things. Mm -hmm. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Mm -hmm. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There mm -hmm. is nothing forward or perverse, forward or perverse in them. Mm -hmm. They are all plain to him that understands, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instructions and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Mm -hmm. For wisdom is better than rubies, and the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Mm -hmm. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride the fear of the Lord is to what? Hate evil. And what else? Pride and arrogancy in the evil way in the forward mouth do I hate. Mm -hmm. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Mm -hmm. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Mm -hmm. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Mm -hmm. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And that I, I might cause those that love me to inherit substance. Right? The whole setup that this that the most high God is trying to show us here is that a woman operates in the background, just like wisdom is characterized here. The woman operates in the background as a decision. 
right? As someone who informs decisions. So if a woman is wise and she she's taken and made herself wise by reaching out to this book and understanding the book. Now, when the man comes to her because of all her wisdom, without her teaching him any word, when the man comes to her and say, what do you think about this? Right? How do you think this should go? She has the wisdom by which kings rule. That's why King Ahasuerus can go to his wife and she say, you know what? I think we should turn the thing around let the Jews kill him. And that was the right decision. That's why the Most High God could feel comfortable saying, you know what? Everything Sarah did, that's right. Because that was the right decision. She had the proper judgment. Our job has to be one, teach our wives, right? And then our, our wives' jobs have to be two, to gain that wisdom. So now that the husband can trust the wife to be able to make decisions, that they can make wise decisions or give wise input and say, you know what? This is how it is. It's naturally in them. To seek that wisdom is natural. Right? That's why Eve already reached out. First thing she's looking at it like, that thing good to eat. Yeah, it looked pretty nice too. It's a shiny. But I think it can make me wise. I need that. Right? We have what makes us wise. In this book. Right? If we can open that up when we look at it, then we have Deborah's walking around with us side by side. We have judges that can make decisions, that can look at the matter and be like, you know what? I know you're just not in a clear space right now. You have a lot as a man. You got a lot to deal with. You may not be looking at it clearly. This is the correct thing to handle. This is the correct way to handle this problem. This is what you're not seeing. Right? That's a judge. Right? We all could be judges. But it's an important role for our women, especially our wives. Amen. Gra Amen. Oh, here we go. Go back to go back to uh, Judges chapter four. Give me verse five. This thing don't apply to nobody in this room. <laughs> It Judges chapter uh, 4, give me verse 5. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Uh -huh. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, uh -huh. the, out of Kadesh Naphtali, mm -hmm. and said unto him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor? and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera, mm -hmm. the captain of Jabin's army, with, the, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. Mm -hmm. And Barak said unto her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, then I will not go. All right? So now Barak, he's looking at it. He went to the woman to get judgment. He went to Deborah to get judgment. Deborah said, listen, this is what the Most High God wants you to do. Take your butt up there and go take this land, right? Go regain our, our, our authority here, right? So Barak's like, all right, but I'm not going to go unless you go with me, right? So let's see what Deborah said. And she said, I will surely go with thee. She said, I'll go with you for sure. But notwithstanding the journey that you, have, that you take shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Right? So he, she, since she had to go with him, she pulled to him like, I'll go with you. But let me let you know, now this war that we're about to go in, it's not going to be to your glory. It's going to be given into the hands of a woman now. Right? Let's hear about it. Keep going. Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Mm -hmm. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. Mm -hmm. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet. Uh -huh. And Deborah went up with him. Uh -huh. Now Heber, the son of the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had served himself from the Kenites, uh -huh. severed himself from the Kenites, uh -huh. and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanaim. Okay. 
So Johnny. now, so now it's a it's 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 a man's wife who has a tent, right? She got her little tent. You know what I'm saying? She in there. She hanging out, right? Let's hear about it. Which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was going up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even the hundred chariots of iron, uh -huh. and all the people that were with him, from Herosheth, from Herosheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Kishon. Uh -huh. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into, the, into thine hand. Okay. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So now Deborah let him know you about to win this thing. You about to kill Sisera. Right? You about to you about to win this whole thing. It's about to be over. Right? So what up? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and ten thousand men after him. Okay. And the Lord discomforted Sarah, Sisera, and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. Bet you're gonna tell you not a man was left. So that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and, and after the host unto Hezareth of the Gentiles. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Okay. Howbeit, Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Eber the Kenite. So now you have, you have Sisera leaving, and he went to Eber, right? Her name was Jael, right? He went to her, and she was a wife of his ally. So the same ally we talked about earlier, she was his wife. So he's running away. All his men have died. He's the only one left, and he sees the wife of his ally, and she has a tent. He runs inside of her tent, right? Because he's thinking this is a safe spot. Watch how the wisdom of this woman handles this. Watch this. Without word. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Eber, the Kenite. And Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in unto me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man does come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here? You shall say no. Mm -hmm. Then Jael, Eber's wife, took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail in his temple, and fastened it to the ground. For he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. I heard that show snapped. That's where they got it from. <laughs> All right? She wasn't his husband. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't his wife. But she looked at it and she knew that if he thought that she and her husband were his allies, he would come in there. So he came in there. And she said, oh, no, my lord. Don't worry. I'm, I'll go ahead and go to sleep. As soon as he went to sleep, took a nail, slammed that thing into his head, killed the man. So now the war was won. The glory of the, the war went to a woman, just like the prophet Deborah said. Right? That's how the Most High God set this up. Where the power of a woman doesn't come like the power of a man. The power of a man is going to be out there. He's going to stand out there. He's going to be like, yo, what's going on? The power of a woman is going to be like, oh, no, it's all right. No, you good, you good. Shit. And that thing done. Right? That thing can work out for our good or it can work out for our bad. Right? But that's what we have to we have to be aware of. We have to understand that the power of a woman is not boisterous and it's not out there, right? The power of a woman is more subtle. It's in the background. It's leading from the behind, right? It's being able to say, okay, you know what? This is the direction you should go. Calm, cool, right? And what that does is that directs the meaning. My whole life I wanted a daughter. Because before I knew the Bible, I knew that. I was looking like, these women don't even know how much they can get done. My whole life, I wanted a daughter. My mind was bad, so what I was going to teach her was all the wrong stuff, right? But I did know that a woman could be the most powerful thing in the world. I mean, if you just look at it, the woman is the most powerful thing. Like, there's so much influence that a woman has without having to lead, without having to be the face of it. 
So that means she could play the background of everything and never take the heat. You know what I mean? And that's what happens so much in the world that people don't even know this. Women in the background moving pieces, doing stuff, influencing people to do it. The man jump out there and be like, oh, this is what we doing. He get his butt shot up. And the woman say, okay, find her a new husband and do the same thing again. Right? Because she'll play the background the whole time. Right? Now that's wisdom used in for evil, right? But still there's the same type of wisdom that have that, that we can find with power that a man won't be able to wield. And so that's why you have a woman prophet like like Deborah. Because it provides that difference. She's not the face. You think if you have a man prophet and he say, Yo, let's go to war, he's gonna be the face. Right? What do you think happened to Elijah? They were chasing Elijah butt down, wasn't they? I'm gonna kill him. You gonna chase? Oh yeah, we killing him. You've never heard about any anywhere in the Bible. We've had multiple women prophets. You've never heard about anybody trying to kill a woman prophet. There's a reason for it. They ain't even, they ain't even paying her no mind. <laughs> they not paying her no mind. It's like okay for sure. A man, a, a male prophet, he might go up like. Most high God say go up there. He might take the war with him. He might go out there. All the other judges that we had, they went to war. You see Ehud, he went to war. We're going to see a couple other judges after that. They went to war. Deborah, she just went the man who went to war. Guess who get the heat? Him. When those people want their revenge, who they coming after? Deborah? No, nah, Deborah going to be chilling. She gonna wait for the next one to come. Yeah, she gonna tell them like, that's what God say, and then they gonna go do it because she making the decisions, right? She makes the decision on the matter, and they trust her decision, so they follow through as leaders with her decision, right? It's important. The concept, the value of women, has to be seen. The real value. We can't make this fake value. We can't just you know what I'm saying. Well. Women is the same as men. That's the value. No, that's not value. That's fake. It's not real. Women aren't the same as men. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing, nothing the same. Our whole genetic makeup is different. You know what I'm saying? Like everything about it is different. <laughs> you know what killed me? They, they just they fired that woman about uh, blackface. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she is talking about what's her name? I don't know. Who know about her? But I heard about it. You know about it. You be watching news, don't you? No. You be watching news? No. What's her name? I think of her name. But it's a, you know what I'm saying? It's a white woman. She used to work for Fox News. Uh, Megan Kelly is her name. You know what I'm saying? She used to work for Fox News. You know what I'm saying? Then she came over to NBC afterwards. And so they put her on a talk show on NBC. And then it was right before Halloween or on Halloween. They started asking questions and talking. And then she said, you know, and I don't know what the big deal is about blackface. When I was a kid, we all did. You know what I'm saying? My friends would wear blackface. And it was no big deal. Now it's a big deal. Right? So, you know, our history of blackface is white folks used to, you know, paint themselves black and then, you know, act crazy and, and act like character, 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 caricatures caricature. of black people. Right? Just pretty much little, you know what I'm saying, just the, the worst forms of it, the funniest forms of it. To, you know what I'm saying, and what they, what they end up doing is making us look crazy and stupid and, and all that. Yeah. Insulting us. Right? So, then it went to the point where even black people dressed in blackface. So it wasn't the fact, it wasn't good enough the fact that I'm black. Now this character has already been promoted. I need to em emulate that character that you made. So this is not really me, right? But I have to paint my face black after already being black, paint my lips red, right? And then play this little clown type character, right? And so that keeps going and that keeps going and that creates a history and it's be it becomes one of those things along with slavery and along with injustice one of those things that they could always kind of just shove into the picture to be like a little poke towards us, right? So now you separate that. We haven't had to deal with that necessarily in that form, really, even though it shows up in a lot of other forms, for a while. And so you had this woman who's detached from that history, who doesn't really know about the negative side of that history, and she says, you know what? I don't see what the big deal is. Now here's why I bring this up. A lot of people says, you know what, wearing blackface or trying to dress up even like Bob Marley or trying to, a white person trying to dress up like Lil Wayne or, 
you know, whoever they might try to dress up like a famous person that's black, even doing that is blackface. Is what the point they're making. They say, you know what? It's culture appropriation. Right? We heard that before, culture appropriation. It's one of the things that a lot of the college students use now. It's like a white person can't dress up like an Indian on Halloween or a Native American, rather, on, on Halloween. Um, they can't dress up like a Japanese person or like a samurai or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's you're appropriating their culture. That's wrong. You shouldn't do it. All right? But we look at this thing. When it comes to male and female and men and women, suddenly it's okay for those same groups. Right? For those same groups of people that complain that you shouldn't culture appropriate, those same groups of people will say, you know what? It's okay to be transgender. How is that not sex appropriating? Like, how is that not the same thing? If I was born something and then I end up being something else in my mind or having a sex change to make myself appear as something else, right? The logic that we have is off. And it's because a lot of it, a lot of it comes from us not respecting the value of women, right? The real value, not this fake value that we have, right? It's just... We haven't been taught, really, the value of women, like what, what the value that women actually bring, brings. And women haven't been taught it. So they forego it, and they'd rather be a man. Right? They seek to be men. They seek to, to portray themselves as power in the way that men have power. They don't find the glory in the way that they have power. Right? And a lot of it is because men have abused things. Right? We talk about this stuff. When we talk when we talk about some of this stuff, what first thing women say to us is, where does it say in the Bible that a wife gotta stay at home? I don't say nowhere. You know what I'm saying? That thing, that thing got nothing to do with the Bible. A wife ain't gotta stay at home. Proverbs even said a wife works. You know what I'm oh goodness. Y'all wanna talk about a virtual woman? Grab uh, let's grab let's Proverbs 31. We'll get up out of here. I didn't know y'all want to talk about a virtual woman now. Goodness gracious. These people be having it all wrong. Yeah. It's Proverbs chapter 31. Is it 30 or 31? 31. 31. It's Proverbs chapter 31. You can go ahead and start at verse 1. We really started at verse 5. Well, you started at verse 1. Well, yeah, it's all good. It's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1. Let's hear about a virtuous one. They be getting this thing all wrong. People be with these Christians read this thing all the time. They read all the time. They ain't even pay attention to what they don't read. You know, you know what they start? They see virtuous. They go, oh, that's that. <laughs> Look at God. Oh, goodness. They just see virtuous. All the rest of that stuff just mumble darn jumble to them. It's just virtuous. Let's read about this woman. Let's see what makes her virtuous. Verse 10. No, I want verse 1. Yeah, I want verse one. Let's read it. The words of King Lemuel, the uh -huh. prophecy that his mother taught him. Mm -hmm. That his mother what? Taught him. What that mean? Mom, she was a prophet. She was a prophet. Saw a vision. Or a dream. What you talking about? That's another one they'll use. See? The virtual woman, she taught. Let me tell you, that thing gonna get you under two conditions. One, right? That was her baby. Right? A woman can't teach a what? Man. She can teach her son. She can teach a baby at least. She can't teach her grown son. She can teach her baby. She can teach her child. Right? And then two, what does she teach? Not a prophecy. That's straight from God. That thing ain't written. That ain't Bible. You know what I'm saying? That thing didn't become it. That, that thing didn't become Bible until she said it. Yeah. Right? She spoke word. All right, keep going. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows. Uh huh. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. Mm hmm. It is not it is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Mm hmm. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the or of any of the afflicted. Hello. Keep going. <laughs> Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Right? When you when you darn sad and depressed, right? She said, go ahead and get wine to them. Right? 
Yeah. Dang, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about that. But I'm just saying, that's what she's trying. She's just trying to tell you. You get one of the people that got heavy heart, they going through something. Right? Get one to the people that's ready to perish. Strong drink to the people that are ready. I mean, they just ready to get up out of here. Go ahead and give it to them. She said, it's not for a leader. It's not for somebody that got to make decisions. Keep going. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy womb for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Mm -hmm. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Mm -hmm. Open thy mouth, judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Mm. That's where they stop. That's where the Christians stop. No, they keep they keep reading, but in their mind, that's where they stop. They, they ain't got past the rubies yet. They way down on verse what? What's the last verse? Mm. Uh, the one we read, Tim. No, what's the last verse of the chapter? Uh, 31. 31. They read, they way down like verse 25. They still think about she don't surpass rubies. I mean, way past the price of rubies. Keep going, watch this. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Okay. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Okay. She seeks, she sheeketh wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She does what though? Works willingly with her hands. That thing don't say, listen, that didn't come from no Bible that a woman got to stay at home. That came from men. Right? A man said that. A man said, you know what? I don't want you out there, you know what I'm saying, doing that. I want your butt to sit at home. That thing ain't come from no Bible. The Bible ain't never mandate that. The Bible ain't never even gave no, no representation of that. You've never seen it in the Bible where a woman just stay at home and that's all. Right, Ruth worked. Yeah. Ruth butt got out there and worked. She, she was considered a, a righteous woman. Mary, Martha, they butts got out there and worked. I don't know. Let's see. Keep going. <laughs> she is like the merchant's ships. She brings her food from afar. Mm -hmm. She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion of her maidens. You know what that means? She rises what? She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. What that sound like? Good Christian, Christian don't be reading it. You know what You got to read it. What that sound like? She rises what? She rises also while it is yet night. And so she meat. rises also while it's still night. And gives meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. So she's getting that land ready, cutting it up. She wake up early in the morning while it's still dark. Mm -hmm. Cooking breakfast. Right? My mom used to do that thing, you know what I'm saying? We used to go to school. My mom would be up in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? still dark. I, I, wake, I used to wake up, I always wake up early. Mama be up in there with the grits, you know what I'm saying? The foul bacon and everything. You know what I'm saying? We wake up for school. Sit your butt. My mama mean though. You know what I'm saying? Sit your butt starting down. Sit at that table, this, that, and other. But mom took care of us though. You know what I'm saying? Mom, you know what I'm saying? It was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? She had a whole plate, you know what I'm saying? Every darn morning for school for a while. That's what's up. She stopped doing that thing after a while. Dang it. Like that. You know what I'm saying? But mom used to do that thing every darn morning. My mom was busy. You know what I'm saying? We got little slices of virtuous women. You know what I'm saying? You know, little slices. Because Nobody's taught it. Mm -hmm. Right? Once a woman be able to look at it like, okay, I understand my value, my real value, not this fake stuff, not all this stuff the world try to put in my brain of what a woman should be and all this. I understand what the most high God expects. I understand what the most high God says is my value. You look at that and then you learn what a virtual woman is, a lot of our women can pick up. Now, what the, what the book's saying is not, it's not, it's not, it's not a lie. Right? None of us should, should feel bad like if our woman or if we are not this. It's not a lie. He told you. That thing ain't gonna, that thing ain't gonna be easy to find now. That's a rare thing. That's a special thing. Mm -hmm. Right? That thing ain't gonna be easy. I mean, we just got, you know what I'm saying? We just got, but we can at least look at it and say, okay, how many of these can I check off? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How many of these can I check off? Personally, I think I feel like the women, you know what I'm saying? At least they get theirs like all in one place. You know what I'm saying? We got to search the whole book to kind of figure out how to be a man. Like, all right, let's get a little bit. All right, Abraham did this. You know what I'm saying? They got there. They got a summary version. Like, ah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> check, 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 check. check. I'm like, goodness. 
You know what I'm saying? Where the virtuous man at? That's all right, though. I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hand. She what? Hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Tell me, tell me about the part where she went in her husband's bank account. <laughs> Tasha, hold on, come here. Baby, wake up. Book being preached. Goodness gracious, tell me, hold on. Tell me how thy bank account was used. Go ahead, show me. She this considered a field and buy it. Look, hold on. She walked out there. She said. That's a nice feel. Oh, no, 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 baby. You go ahead. <laughs> I'll take it. Let me tell you. Virtuous, darn woman. Goodness gracious. Let me see. Let me hear something else. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. With the fruit of her hands. Right? She bought the field with the fruit of her own hands. So, in other words, she got the money. It was her own money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She worked. It already told you she'd be working. She worked, she got the money, she bought the vineyard, and then from the fruit of her own hand, she planted that day. So she paid for all that stuff. All right, keep going. She girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. Mm -hmm. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. Mm -hmm. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. Look, look at that. She's sewing together stuff, you know what I'm saying? Keep going. <gasps> Keep going. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of, of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes See, that thing don't bother her. It's cold outside. Oh, my whole family prepared. That thing don't bother her one bit. All right, keep going. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Mm -hmm. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchants. Look, I'm going to tell you. What does the virtuous woman sound like to us? She works. That sounds like a business woman. Mm -hmm. Don't let these people confuse y'all about what we dealing with here. Don't let anybody confuse you. Oh, the woman got to stay at home. Our women choose, right? You choose to stay at home or we work it out in our marriage and we say this is what makes sense for her. That's fine. But don't make it seem like that thing coming from the Bible. <laughs> right. Don't, I don't see, I don't, I'm just saying. They, they try to throw that thing at no, the Bible. Of heaven. No, don't put that stuff on the Bible. That that, sometimes that thing just work out. Right. Those are, sometimes it just work out, it work out better. It's easier that way. You know what I'm saying? It just work out. You know what I'm saying? We don't trust these systems with our kids. We like our wives to have more time with our kids so that they can be, you know what I'm saying, they can put this stuff in our kids. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes kids need a little bit more care. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense for our wife to stay home, take care of the kids. That makes sense. Right? At the same time, though, virtual woman, she out there, she probably she probably ain't got no job either. She running the business. Ain't that what it say? Yeah. All right, let's look at it again. Read that one more time for me. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. And then what she do with it? Her husband is known in the gates, and when he sits among the elders of the land, she makes fine linen and sells it. She does. She makes fine linen and does what? And sells it. This whole time, y'all ain't even been paying attention to what's been going on. Right? This whole time, it started off talking about, yeah, she be working with her own hands. Right? Then it go on down and said, she look at the field, and she considers it. And then, with the fruit of her own hands, she plants it. Then it came later, and it started telling you about a spindle. She had a spindle. Okay. Then all of a sudden... She got these clothes. She makes sure her whole house got clothes for the snow. Then after that, she said, you know what? I'm going to sell this extra that I got. She's a businesswoman. She looked at the field and she said, that's what I want. She planted the stuff. She, she, she planted some flax she, uh, from the spindle. She made linen. Then she took the linen, provided for her whole household. Then after she got done with that, she said, I'm selling all the extra. I might just go buy another field. What you talking about? Man, let's keep reading. What you think Anaka be doing when she looking at this stuff? She don't offer up. This stuff is natural. Definitely spending all your money. But that's all right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We got little slices. You know what I'm saying? You got to give them a break. We got to learn how to be men. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you know what I'm saying? It's like... You know what I'm saying? But the, we, I'm just 
just saying we there though. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's there. We we see the pieces. Right. We just gotta learn it. We gotta be able to look at it and be like, who gonna teach us the truth about us? Right. Keep going. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Mm -hmm. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Mm -hmm. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Uh huh. Her children arise up and call her blessed. She, hold on, she, hold on. She look. Well, back it up for me a little bit. This is some important stuff. Yeah. Back it up for me a little bit. She looks we starting well to read this thing like Chris. She look what? Well to the ways of her house. Now back it up before that. She opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She opens her mouth with wisdom, right? So whenever that question come up, whenever it's time to consider her words, she's making sure she's saying something that makes sense, is wise. That's important. She opens her mouth with wisdom and in her mouth is the what? The law of kindness. Keep going. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Okay. Her she eats not what? The bread of idleness. She not sitting around. She not sitting there farting and pooping all day. She's trying to figure out what's the next thing. How do we make it happen? What do you think Danielle's out here doing? Mm. Mm. Say that. You should say that. Say that. <laughs> right? She's looking for it. She's looking up all these different things. All right, do terror, this, that, and other. Now, you know what I'm saying? We got to get it to the point where she ain't spending all this money, but that's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? We ain't 100% there yet, but we working. You know what I'm saying? We, we got something going on. Right? I tried to get Tasha to stay at home. I was like, you know what I'm saying? You good. You know what I'm saying? You all right? You know what I'm saying? We got two now. Why don't you just relax? How long that thing last? Her C-section wasn't even healed yet. Listen, uh, I'm just going to take a part-time job. That, that part-time job lasted about a month or two. I went ahead and went full-time. I said, well, you got it. She like to work with her own hands. She like to have her own money. Right? These are all pieces of a virtual woman. We just haven't, we haven't been taught as men how to teach our women how to be this. We haven't been taught how to teach them their value so they can be secure in being a woman and not have to feel like, you know what, in order for me to have value, in order for me to, to, to have power, I need to act like a man or be like a man or be well, there's a, or emulate certain pieces of a man. No. That's what the world will have us believe. Right? That the world will have us believe all that stuff and that puts us in the awkward. That takes away from our opportunity to be more. Or not our, but y'all's opportunity, a woman's opportunity to be more of a virtuous woman. But we can see it's natural. It's in our women. You can just see it. Little pieces of it here and there. Right? We just got to grow until we get to, you know what I'm saying, that full thing. Keep going. Watch this. People ain't teaching no darn book. Her children arise up. And call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Uh huh. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Mm -hmm. Favor is deceitful, mm -hmm. and beauty is vain. Mm -hmm. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Mm -hmm. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Just give me what I just give me what I deserve. Give me what I work for, and don't worry about it. That thing will work out. Right? That's a virtuous woman. Whoever, whoever, whoever read this before? Read it before, right? It didn't sound like it did tonight, huh? Because we read stuff and we get to, stuff get taught to us and then we read it. So when we read it, you know what we were looking for the whole time we read it? We were looking for that beauty is vain part. You got certain Christian parts in there. That whole part in the middle ain't no, I've never, in my entire life, I've never heard nobody quote none of it. Listen, I, when I read this thing, I was looking like, oh, this is a businesswoman. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, was like, yeah. I read it and I was like, oh, this is not, this is not what I thought. Right. Oh, she's so kind to her husband and she treats him right. She be, she and she, be, oh, she, oh, and she, she oh yeah, she do all that too. At the end of the day though, I ain't even got time to be seeing her argue my I'm out here getting the, I'm out here making it happen. What the husband gonna say? You bring the camera, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say nothing. And you waking up early before, and you making bread. Oh, the husband, trust me, husband ain't got nothing to darn say. But shut your darn mouth. 
She the one that's taking care of business. All right? Our book is not our book is not what these people try to make it out to be. Like this sexist thing. That's, a, that's not what our book is. Don't let these people confuse. We know what our books say. All right? We know what the books say. All right? And that's why, that's why the Most High God feel comfortable putting, putting the whole battle that, that we just read about in Judges into the hands of a woman. Right? To let us know that the power does not have to lie in the, with the men. And a lot of times, even though a man does the killing, the power is behind him. We're going to get the Jezebel one day. We can see yeah. the negative side of this. Yeah. Right? We can see the negative side of it. Right? Sometimes, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can see it work out for good. But we can see a lot of times it work out for bad, too. It's all in the book. Right? It's all in the book. Any questions? Let's go ahead and pray out.